What's going on everybody? Welcome to episode 107 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. Hey, first of all, thank you so much Fabian for the animated intro. You gotta check out his animations. I got a link to his site in the video description down below. But also he did the animated intro for Shadow of the Colossus. So if you haven't seen that episode, it's a work of art. And can somebody give me a drum roll please? Because we have a very special guest that has joined the party. Vinny Vine Sauce is finally on Boundary Break. I'm incredibly honored to have him here, especially because I'm gonna just say it right now, this might be my favorite episode of Boundary Break of all time. And you're gonna see why in just a few seconds. So why don't we get started? So normally on the show I love to cover the episodes in chronological order, and by that I mean from the start of the game to the end of the game. But as a result, sometimes the best stuff that the show has to offer is all the way at the end of the episode. So I wanted to make sure that I showed you one of the best things right off the bat. Which means that the first thing that we're going to be boundary breaking is the bathrooms. Now for whatever reason, the bathrooms in Mother 3 work completely differently from the rest of the game. And by that I mean almost every single room in Mother 3 has its own separate map. Whereas with these bathrooms in Pokey's Tower, all the bathroom stalls seem to share a map together, which is great because for some reason, there are characters and things outside of the boundaries that the player can never see. For example, some of these stalls that are already occupied share character dialogue with you. However, if you were to break the boundaries from an available stall, you can see the character sprites are for whatever reason represented in the occupied stalls. And again, these are character sprites that you, the player, would never be able to see. And as it turns out, these are also character sprites that you're never supposed to interact with. They don't have any character dialogue attached to them unless you speak to them from outside the stall. And by the way, the developers are really dedicated to this. There's even a character that rushes to a stall and gets in there before you get your chance to. And if you were to visit that stall before that trigger happens, he's not inside the stall. But obviously if he gets to that bathroom before you and then you check the bathroom stall, he happens to be there. And we're not even close to being done with this rabbit hole just yet. Over at this stall, you can see that it's clearly leaking and the water seeping through the door. Once again, not allowed to go inside of it, but if you were to break the boundaries on the inside stalls, you can see that there's unique textures to represent the toilet flooding. And also there's an unused stall. Now, normally if you go inside the stall, there's the ultimate chimera. But if the stalls were to be placed properly, you can see that originally this stall was supposed to have just a bunch of toilet paper, like an absurd amount of toilet paper. <laughs> Next up is what I like to call the Tale of the Hidden Flints. Periodically throughout the entire world of Mother 3, you can remove layers and occasionally find another flint or multiple flints. And at first I thought I was just gonna have to report this as a weird phenomenon that I couldn't explain. But thankfully, someone reached out to me on Twitter that goes by at Lorenzone with three O's at the end. And he was able to field any questions that I had because he works within the ROM of Mother 3. And so with that said, let's explain what's going on here. What you're looking at is a reflection. Doesn't really quite look like it here in this scene though, does it? But the reason why they all look like Flint is because all the sprites in the game have their own values. So try to imagine which value Flint would end up being. Hopefully you picked zero because that would be the correct answer. So even though all these sprites start at value zero, depending on who you have in your party is going to decide what that Flint sprite is going to be. So let's say that Duster's sprite is a large value like 24. The second that he gets loaded into a room, one of the flints will be taken out of his Q spot and programmed to move in conjunction with Duster and then change his value from 0 to 24, turning him into Duster. Now there has to be the correct number of flints inside of these maps corresponding to how many sprites need to be reflected. So for example, if there's not enough flint sprites to go around, you're not going to be able to reflect all the characters on the screen. And that is why you'll find so many multiple flints hidden behind a certain layer. So 2D games are like ogres, they have layers. And in some rare cases, developers may overcompensate on the graphics on a layer that gets completely covered up by something else. Case in point right here, you can see this building of a trail that is normally only shown about halfway up and all the other details on the bottom half are completely hidden away to the player. And also in the upper left hand corner, if we were to remove the layer that has the black bars, you can see another sprite of flint. Though in this case, I'm fairly certain this is supposed to be the player sprite, as in this chapter, you are supposed to take control of flint. Another example of this is inside the castle with the needle off in the distance. This room has this really great effect for depth, 
where the layer with the balcony moves at a faster pace than the layer with the garden off in the distance. But if you remove that layer, you're gonna see a whole lot of detail here that never gets shown because the balcony's in the way. So in this flashback scene, Flint and his family are reunited. And as Hinawa is walking away from the family symbolically, you can see that if you remove the top layer, originally she was supposed to walk through clouds. Mother 3 has a ton of unused content just hidden out of bounds. One of which being this sign right at the very start of the game. Now the sign has multiple messages throughout the entire experience, but the very first one is quoted as saying, the contents of these boxes belong to everyone. Use them however you wish. And like I said, there was other messages. So here's the other one that I found. It says, be sure to talk to frogs once in a while. Nothing terribly exciting, but it's just weird that the signpost is all the way out of bounds, far outside the player's visibility and reach. How about completely unused characters with their own unique dialogue? Like when the new porkers come into Tazmilly Village, there's one with the Ali G looking sprite hidden underneath a layer and out of bounds. And when you talk to him, he says, it used to be that Tazmilly's villagers were the only people you saw around here. But these days, visitors from far away have been growing in number. And those visitors are us, followed by a laugh. And when you're at the end of the line for the egg and you're supposed to get it out of the garbage dump, over in the upper left hand corner, a duplicate of the egg on a pedestal can be seen as well as a mouse. And the child mouse's dialogue is squeak, squeak, squeak. Somehow I feel like something's going to happen in this garbage dump. I guess it's just a mouse's sixth sense. Well, I better head back to mom now. And then the mouse walks away. Also in the upper left hand corner of New Pork City, on the second phase, you can find a police officer who says, Master Porky referred to you as very dear and captivating guests. You're dear and captivating? You don't seem that special to me. And then there's all sorts of strange things hidden outside in corners as well. You got this save frog that I'm assuming is a placeholder because you can save your game through a bathroom door. You've got these pig masks who only show up after a cutscene, which may have been originally intended for that cutscene but then got unused because talking to them doesn't give you any dialogue at all. And then occasionally you can find enemies out of bounds too. I managed to find this ghost in the upper left hand corner in the main area of the castle as well as this mushroom that's in the corner of one of the maps for the train tracks. If you get to this spot in any chapter before the Chimera Lab and you boundary break past the pig mask NPC, you can actually find an entirely unused scene. To begin with, the receptionist has dialogue that's unused in the game. If you get into the theater, you'll actually be treated to a movie. That doesn't work. If you continue on, you'll see that there's a door guard stacked on top of a pig mask NPC. Unfortunately, the pig mask takes priority over the door guard, so it's impossible to know if there's any dialogue attached to the character. In this area, if you disable the layer the ropeway building is on, you'll find a lone Mr. Saturn just hanging out behind the building for no apparent reason. Weird. You can't activate his dialogue, but if you could, it's the same as the ropeway attendant. Extra weird. A lot of digging was done to see if there was any kind of purpose for this Mr. Saturn, but there just doesn't seem to be one. As a result of this digging though, it was discovered that there are two scripts tied to this area involving Flint telling Lucas that they should head back to Tasmily Village. Also, the only other time Mr. Saturn isn't present in this area is when you're being guided by the Mole Cricket to his tunnel. What has the Mole Cricket done with Mr. Saturn? <laughs> Here's a whole bunch of things I didn't really have a category for. First off, we got the drummer here from DCMC. Now the cool thing about the drummer is that the drum kit is not on the sprite layer. It's on a completely different layer. So if we remove the layer that's covering up the drummer, you can see that the sprite that's used to do the drumming has a lot of pixels to his animation that's never shown to the player. Not in any kind of sequence, not even the credits of the game. Like I mentioned earlier in the episode, sometimes you can find NPCs in the corners, sometimes you can find enemies but also sometimes you can find a blank void space that the character can't pass through, which technically means that it's an invisible sprite. During the movie theater scene that shows you all the Earthbound characters, for whatever reason, the characters on the projection screen have a different layer from the environment that they stand on. So in a lot of cases, I could either remove the background, I could walk behind the characters, or I could remove those characters from the scene. 
Pokey's limousine has cloud sprites that are way above the map, nowhere near the windows that they should be shown through. This area here with all the vines is really cool because it's on a separate layer for the vines, which means that if we remove that layer, you can see what the temple was originally supposed to look like without any vines. I'm just now realizing I probably should have gotten the guy with vine sauce in the name to talk about the vine segment. What was I thinking? The scene with Mr. Saturn is supposed to have a little bit of a funny joke where it seems like the Mr. Saturn's going to walk away and you're never going to see them again, but then they show up really, really close by. Well, by maneuvering ourselves in a certain way, you can see that the sprite doesn't actually walk to that path and then end up at that spot. Instead, there is a path that the sprite goes to and then it gets warped to the spot that the player's used to seeing. So for chapter six, you might be surprised to find out that the map loops. Now normally the player's not allowed to go all the way right, there are flags that stop the player from being able to move any further at a certain point. But when you go far left, you eventually reach a cliff and you jump off and it ends the chapter. But if we were to boundary break the right side, you can see that the cliff is also on the right side and that's only because this map will do that endless loop. Now the name your character screens have all sorts of environments that are usually hidden behind some of these text boxes, but I found the one in the desert to be the most interesting and unique. Finding stray tiles of environments outside the boundaries is incredibly rare, and trust me I've checked every single map in Mother 3, so here are the few that I managed to find. One is inside the factory where you can see some more of the conveyor belt tiles, and also in this tunnel here when you're traveling with a Majipsy. Over to the left is an identical environment hidden underneath a black layer. And the last one I was able to find was this water sprite hidden outside of a cave in the mountains. And in this scene where Lucas is supposed to be passed out, you can remove this layer here to show that Lucas and Boney are in the upper left hand corner. Immediately after that though, as the scene fades in, you can see Lucas on top of the bed. And I gotta say, the strangest thing that I saw was that on the left hand side of the club in chapter four, the entire left hand side out of bounds will warp your character back to the original point of the game, but with a sunset. Something like this doesn't exist in any other room of the game. And here we are at the very end of the game. A lot of people wanted to know if there were sprites hidden around somewhere, and uh, well, there is one. If you remove the layer that says end, it reveals two more layers. One is the sprite layer with Lucas in control. The other is an all white background, which neither are ever revealed to the player. And behind that is absolutely nothing. It's the void. And in case some of you guys are a little bit confused about what's going on here, I made a physical representation so that's a little easier to digest. So thanks, she says, for letting me be a part of this episode. It's an honor. I recently streamed Mother 3 for the very first time, and it's quickly become one of my favorite RPGs. I also corrupted the game recently, which, for those that don't know, is kind of like a code soup, which turns into a lot of weird glitches, and includes happenings such as Gutter Duster, which I won't even try to explain. But anyway, thanks again. Boing!